Welcome back everybody. Today we have something special for you. We are doing a deck tech and I know it's like gasp. I know it's been a very long time. So in case you forgot what a deck tech is, is it's going to be a slim, sexy 60 cards. It's going to be a complete deck idea that you can take out and run on your own. The fun thing about this particular deck tech is that it's unfinished. This is a deck tech ellipses. You know, it's, it's got a little bit of spice at the end that you can add yourself. And I think that that's kind of the format that we're going to go through now. Uh, back in the olden days, when the format wasn't as open as it is now, and, you know, the cards were much stricter, there was a best version of most of those decks. And you could tweak them and have a lot of fun, but for this, it's much more fluid, and it depends on what, who's playing what and what the format's like and things like that. This is a super fun deck. It's really cool, and um, it's really exciting, too. This isn't the most guaranteed win deck that I have, like you're not going to be pulling down uh, like a 97 percentile or something insane like that, like you're not going to start kicking ass, but it's a ton of fun. It's very tense too, because a lot of times you'll get down to like five or three or, or, you know, those lower numbers and be like, oh, just snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. It's a lot of fun. I think we're going to have a good time playing with it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the cards that are inside of it. Then we're going to talk about some basic strategies, like I said, and then we'll actually play a quick game with it and see if I can back up what I'm saying. Now we'll look down here. We've got one creature, Kozilek, obviously. Um, his main focus of Kozilek, well, we'll talk about Kozilek when we get there. This is actually the first time. I would say that it's probably higher on Synergy, at least a three or a four um, on Synergy, but Control is definitely the crux of this deck down there on the speed and strength and everything. One creature, 36 other spells, and 23 lands, and that all kind of gels together. 23 lands is nice. I had 24 for a while. We want to play a land every single turn. It's of the utmost importance in this deck that we have as much land out as possible so we can do the things that we want to do later on. Speaking of those lands, they are going to be distributed. Left trigger. Um, 9, 10, and 4. We don't need any of the fancy lands because this is just a bi-color build. Uh, 9 and 10 because it is largely blue. Like the large mass of this is blue but it doesn't really matter too much we could augment this to eight planes and 11 islands if we need to like i said this is going to be a little fluid but I, I don't think it really matters because everything the only dedicated we have is planner cleansing which only comes out turn six anyway and i haven't had a problem casting it yet regardless the main thing with this deck, before we talk about it, you need to know what you're on the lookout for. What are we trying to do here? Well, the main thing about this deck is to... It's a version of Nat. If you remember that deck, it used bounce techniques and, and some things that I've taken out here that are curiously absent. Uh, mainly being Archaeomancer with Cloud Shift. And the reason I took that out is not because it's weak or not because I don't like it. Well, it is because I don't like it, actually. It's been done to death now in the format, and I'm kind of bored of it, and I don't really want to play it anymore. Um, if you run this deck and you want to add that back in here, that's absolutely a great idea. It's a very powerful combo, and it is a good win con for this deck. The win cons for this deck are a little... non-existent. <laughs> But uh, they seem to show up reliably, and, and a lot of that has to do with the amount of card draw that I have in here. You guys can already see a card I'm not super fond of down there. Uh, but the main thing you're going to be doing is stalling your opponent. You're going to want to clear the field as often as possible with things like this. Then you're going to be countering their spells, making sure they don't have anything that they can do, and then laying your things like your big threats down at the very end. It's a very strange deck. Now let's talk about the actual bits of the deck. And let's go ahead and do this so we can talk about some of the cards that I left out. Namely, we've got one right off the bat. We got something a little bit controversial because we do have a four pack of Righteous Blows in lieu of the much more powerful Divine Verdict, which is actually a stronger version of Righteous Blow. And absolutely, it is better in every aspect except cost, which is so important. The reason why Righteous Blow is in this deck is because we need a shock effect. Righteous Blow ostensibly is that shock effect that we need to kind of get us out of that early game and into the mid and late where this deck takes off, starts being able to protect us with Planner Cleansings and Angelic Edicts, and, you know, abusing those two cards ad nauseum. Righteous Blow is for the early game. It's why we run a four-pack. You will see that we run a lot of trips in this one, a lot of three... Um, three ofs so 
It's really important that we have this Righteous Blow for our early game though, so we have four of them. I've always said before, if you want a card in your opening hand, put four. If you want to see it every game, put three. That's obviously not scientifically accurate, but it's just kind of a good frame of reference for when you're building a deck. Four Righteous Blows all the way. Angelic Edict, we have three of. It is a super powerful card, but it is a little too much mana for me to have in my opening hand, hence the reason why we have three of them in here. Uh, Angelic Edict obviously will remove a creature from the game. RFG, which is an old term for exile, uh, but that's super powerful. It means that they can't bring it back no matter what they do. There are no cards in the format that can bring this creature back. For, so for five mana, I know it's sorcery speed, which is a little slow, but for five mana, we can get rid of anything permanently, which is amazing. Planner Cleansing, we have two of. That's our board wipe. We need that reset, and hopefully we have eight mana when we reset it so that we have a counter to stop their next turn because we will be tapped down. Be very conscious of when you're using Planner Cleansing because you can end up screwing yourself if you tap all the way down and they've been waiting for you to do that. So be really careful. Make sure that you still have some mana open when you Planner Cleanse if you can help it. Planner Cleanse a lot of times is kind of like an emergency hatch that you have to uh, jump out of. But if you can help it, and if you kind of have the tempo in your favor, then you don't want to throw that planner cleanse early. We have three Courier's Capsules, which is odd for me because I don't actually like this card. It doesn't gel well with the other things that we have in here because it's not a spell. So the main problem with this, though, well, the main reason it's in here is because it's card draw, and there is no other reliable low mana card draw. We could put in Eeyore Ruin Expedition, but that's slow and we don't get to abuse it. At the very least with this, we can do some stuff with Kozilek. And if we decide, one of the things that I have been debating back and forth is Elixir of Immortality, which is actually way back here at Blaster, I buy it. One of the things I have been debating is Elixir of Immortality. If we end up putting that in here, then uh, Curious Capsule is a lot better because we'll burn through our mana in the interim and stuff like Eeyore Expedition really needs that mana to work you know it's got that landfall ability so really late game the better card to have is courier's capsule instead of that so that's kind of why that's in there over the other one think twice is in here because it's think twice this is a blue deck and now we have some interesting stuff going on so four of those in there we've got three negates three nullifies three dissolves and uh three inspiration but i don't know why i tried to bring that up i was uh, actually trying to look for traumatic visions now, this is a very important section of this deck because it's going to be able to stop our opponent from overwhelming us. Now, they can play some little stuff, and we can deal with that with Righteous Blow, Angelic Edict, Planner Cleansing. But after we Planner Cleanse, what I was saying earlier is you want to make sure that you have a Nullify open, you have a Negate open, you have that Dissolve if you can, because that way you can deal with threats that they play into your tap down field. Because otherwise you don't have any way to really... You don't have both of your planner cleansing, so you really need to be able to work your way out of that scenario, and those counters are going to be how you do that. I would also like to say that the counters are very, very important to our big guys, because we don't want these to be countered. So just assume that Sphinx Bone Wand is a 9 drop, Obelisk is a 8 drop, Kozilek is a 12 drop, because that way we have the 2 mana open, we can chuck a negate, which the main reason negate is in here is to protect those cards. We can chuck a negate at something if our opponent tries to get rid of one of these or counter them themselves. So we have that open mana, hopefully we can use that negate to safely distribute the obelisks and things like that. Uh, now, we will get down to that low end of the field, don't worry, because that is kind of a... Some of you might be throwing some raised eyebrows my way, but we will talk about that in a minute. First, I want to talk about Inspiration. Like I said, card draw is paramount, so we do have three of those as well. Now we can move on to some of the weirder stuff in here. We have three Darksteel Ingots, like I said, one Obelisk, one Sphinx Bone Wand, and one Kuzalek, the Butcher of Truth. Now, these are kind of our win cons. Well, not kind of. These are our win cons. We don't really have anything else that we can do in this deck. And that's why it takes so long to kind of get this deck going and why we'll get so low in life. We do have ways to gain life back. And if we do decide to put the Elixir Immortality, we will gain a little bit more life. If, but I just, I just don't know what I would cut. The 23 lands is paramount. And I don't think there's really anything else that I'm comfortable with cutting. Um, the other thing about Traumatic Visions, which is obviously amazing, is that, like I said, we want to play a land every single turn because we need 12 to play Kozilek. Uh, so the land cycling is definitely a thing. And it is just a straight-up counterspell. I do love Traumatic Visions. It, maybe to a fault, maybe I'm too much of a fan of Traumatic Visions, which is something that you might want to think of if you're building this yourself. 
Uh, Dark Steel Ingot just powers up Ob Obelisk of Alara. It's the strongest card in the format right now and completely useful for us because we can draw a card and discard a card. That gels with everything because we need to fish, we need to get lands, and if we have too many lands, we need to get the lands out of our hand and get them off our top of our pile. So draw a card, discard a card is amazing. Gain five life can get us out of scrapes, but we really don't want to use that too much. And then if we have the ingot, then we're able to utilize all those other abilities that makes this so amazing, except for the uh, plus four, plus four, because that's not something we'll probably want to do. Except we could do their creature. I don't know why. I mean, if you were doing a four player match, you could power up somebody else's creature to deal the finishing blow to someone else um, and just kind of manipulate the field that way, uh, which would be interesting, but kind of a weird use of it. Um, Dark Steel Ingot and Obelisk of Alara go together. I'd say if you pull one, if you pull Obelisk, you obviously have no reason to have Ingot in here, other than the fact that you can land wrap. It is really useful to be able to play that bonus land. I will say one thing about Ingot, never play that on turn three. It is a huge mistake because you're going to throw your tempo off. The most important thing in this deck is tempo. This is a control pile, so you want to play things on their turn. So you play Ingot on your turn four or your turn five. The reason being that Ingot really only costs two mana because it immediately is able to generate a mana of any color for your mana pool. So you get a refund of one mana essentially. So it costs two, meaning that if you play it in a field of four, you're gonna be able to play Nullify. You're gonna be able to play Negate. And then five, you can play your Dissolves and you want those open so that you can keep tempo on your side of the field. Sometimes you won't be able to. Well, guess what? Keep Ingot in your hand. If you have nothing else to do, then you can go ahead and drop Ingot, but nine times out of 10, it's even better to just pretend you have the counter so that your opponent worries more about what you have. Um, you can wait to play Ingot. It's not super important that it's out there early game, you guys. I mean, a lot of our stuff, look at our curve. We've got, you know, four one drops, 13 two drops, six three drops, four, th wow. Three, four drops, six, five drops. Um, you know, it, we really are on the thinner side as far as mana is concerned. So don't worry about the ingot. It can come out later. Make sure you have that counter for it. Don't ruin your tempo just to play that card. It's not a good benefit. Um, risk benefit analysis fails on that one. Sphinx Bone One is going to probably win us the game. Um, Kozilek will win us some games too. It's a pretty snazzy little pile. I think we talked a lot about strategy, so I'm not going to have like a separate little section for that um like i sometimes do with these a lot of ums lately too man i'm rusty on this let's just get into a game see what we can do to an opponent i'm sorry there is some construction going on outside which is insane because it is snowing like it's cold and shitty and i feel bad for those guys like that sucks balls actually but we're nice and warm in here playing some magic the gathering together as buddies as friends as compadres compatriots pals and amigos and hopefully somebody will come in here, and there we go. Vaco, Vaco. Wait, how would I say that? Vaco, Yako. Yeah, they're both the same. And Dot. I was going to do it. It's just Vaco, Vaco, and Bot, though, which is not funny at all. This guy's summoning the uh, DVL to help him out. But the devil's busy working at the McDonald's, so... Oh, there we go. Yeah, he, he was able. He got off his shift early. Your cheese gonna watch the fryer, which is good. The fuck is this garbage? Why don't I play first? Fuck you, game. It's kind of terrible, but kind of good. Mostly terrible. Mmm. Yeah, that tastes like a winner. Nothing. Fuck you. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to play this one because I might have to righteous blow this thing, which is weird. Might be necessary. Yeah, why not? Um, I don't want to have to create your capsule, but the two cards with the delay. I don't know. I need a land. If this guy plays out early on. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Let's go ahead and get that in the yard because I don't have a way to deal with this 2-2 because it's going to be a 3-3 three, three soon. And I don't have anything for that. Land is fine. Courier's Crapsule will keep... See, I just... I, I don't like it, but I need that card draw. And it's not like it's slower than Eeyore's 
magic handbag or whatever the hell else. If please attack him with this two two and nothing else on it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so sweet to me, Vaco. You are so good to me. You just take care of me. I love it. All right, so we got rid of two things that could be annoying later on with the uh, Exalted and everything like that. It's kind of nice to get that out of the way. We now have Nullify open. We can go ahead and go into the Think Twice, and then eventually we'll be able to play that Capsule. That's mid-game card draw. Obviously, we don't want to tap down for it. Uh, so the Exalted and the dude that gets bigger are two good things to get rid of early on. Now we're just going to finally start taking damage. Um, we did have to get rid of a lot of our removal already. We only have two more of those Righteous Blows in the stack. And if this guy keeps dropping small two-in-the-front threats, we're going to be in trouble. But I don't think he will, because I don't think he is utilizing his second main. So, might be a newer player, um, but very aggressive. And an aggressive new player is nothing to sneeze at. We could still be in a lot of trouble here. So, the play here, believe it or not, is not to utilize the Think Twice, because we actually get two cards out of the Curious Capsule. So, we'll go ahead and play that onto the field in say turn because we still have our negate and our nullify open now we could have kept both open and used the thing twice i know um but i'd rather just get the two cards that seems like the thing to do speaking of things to do i think a nullify is in order for this gal and so she shall go to the graveyard lifelink would have been a big pain in the ass although when this deck turns on it deals massive amount of damage or it doesn't do any damage at all so this guy's down to two cards. I would absolutely love to draw my board wipe at some point. Maybe not right now. Uh, but it is something that I want to look into doing kind of soon. And now I can utilize both and draw three cards, which would be four on turn, because when my turn comes back around, we'll be able to get that extra card from my draw step. Six mana. All right, so we're looking at some smaller dudes. He is playing everything first main. Might be the reason why he felt so comfortable with Exalted. So we are going to go ahead and think that this might be a newer player, though we're not sure, and we shouldn't underestimate our opponent as a result of that read. Um, you know, there actually there is some stuff that I could get here, so I might as well just... That was weird. I might as well just uh, tap and see if there's anything. No. So I figured maybe we could smoke this 3-2. There was a very small chance, but it was still there, so it was worth doing. If things worth doing, it's worth doing right. Let's see what we can do here. Draw another card, negate. It's not great for me. That's not great for me either. Four damage each turn does not make me a very happy boy. Not a very happy boy. Just attack with one. Yeah, this guy does know what he's doing. All right. <laughs> Three. Okay, so I thought that I might be taking four there. I was reading into some cards that our opponent did not have. <laughs> um, seven open. There's no reason not to, really. I mean, there are a couple reasons not to, but not in the strictest sense. Like, I'm thinking of, oh, shit. Like, traumatic visions. Shit! See how nervous I am? Here we go. This is it. Oh, God. I would burn through just about anything. Oh, so much land, but we need that land, you guys. We need that land. And the thing is, is that if we drew... There's so many different things that we could draw and get out of this quandary. Uh, Obelisk just saves me because I'm gaining more life than he's taking from me. So Obelisk gets me out of this. Bone Wand jankily gets me out of this. I can't get hit for more damage. He did stop me from drawing that card too. I don't like that particularly. What can you get me though? Damn it. That's eight. I would need what's its nuts to be able to do anything. 
I would need righteous blow. I need righteous blow to be able to do anything here. Because I would need to play the think twice and burn the think twice to get two triggers off Sphinx Bone Wand. Which I can't do. I'm talking about the negate. Because I don't have enough mana. Man, if they just gave us a couple of cards that could kill low-level creatures... That would be great. Fuck. Oh, there's nothing I can do unless I draw my board wipe. I am out of the race. Fuck. I've only got the two open. Nothing I can do about that. Well, perhaps I should have kept my... I would have been eaten. Except he hasn't had anything to play on this hero. I would have been eating way more damage, so... Unfortunate. An unfortunate debut for this deck. Maybe I played that too aggressively. By burning the two uh, Righteous Blows so early, I really hampered my ability to get out of that jam. Cut an Obelisk would free up four cards for us. I don't want to be brash. I don't, I don't want to be... Uh, out of line with just tossing this deck to the wolves. I will do one more though, because that was pretty quick. I don't think we've been recording for too long. But that is uh Huh, that was that that's a little toughy right there. Cause I'm not sure. I mean early game for those two ones, there's not really anything else that we can do. We don't have red. We're not in red. I mean if we splashed red then we're starting to get way out of control. Our mana gets a little sloppy and we have to start worrying about a bunch of other stuff. Because we could, but we would lose some of the counters. We'd lose some of the nullifies because red would bring with it. I don't think we want to be in red. Come, what the fuck? Ridiculous. 23 lands. Oh dear. I think we might be making some tweak ruse to this thing. I think we might need a little bit of red, but then we're going dangerously close to that other deck that we have. And you splash red and you only get two more board wipes, you know what I mean? You only have a little bit more juice in the tank. What if we just went blue-red? We lose the... Because then Obelisk is viable because it has my two favorite triggers. Well, black is probably more of a favorite of mine than the blue one. If we took this red, I think we gain more than we lose. We can't exile stuff, so we can't deal with Kozilek but to counter it, which is scary. I don't like that. I'm gonna cast this, see if I can get a land. Worked out okay. I don't know. Like, in the back of my head, I think that we can do... I, I think this deck is a lot of fun. I think it's awesome. But I think that if we dupe it and then cut white out... So I might make a copy of this deck and then cut white out and see what we can do there. Because that might be... That seems like a pretty interesting experiment. See what we could do. What we could get going on. Puts me on four, which finally opens up this dissolve. It opens up the courier's capsule. We wouldn't have to run Ingot to have Alara be really good, except Ingot is still very good with Alara in there. 
Because instead of the Righteous Blow, we would just run regular Shock. This is my deck. Is this my deck? Yeah, this is my deck. Well, thanks for watching, man. I appreciate it. I think you're about to convince me to make this red. Because my counters don't do anything now that Warstorm Surge is out. Because it just comes out anyway. Hmm. I think this works better blue red. Because I don't want to go three colors. I think this isn't a bad idea for blue red. It's really unfortunate. God, I can't do anything. Oh, we're just gonna have to sit and take this one. But yeah, I really do think that this is a little bit better with the red in there. Cause the white doesn't really give us anything that red can't and it, except for the best board wipe in the game. And if I take this three color, then it really is just that other deck that I run. Hmm. I like this deck a lot. It's a shame this isn't a good showing. Maybe I'll go back to doing my five color though, which is a, a much different game or kind of gameplay strategy than this one, but not really much that I can do here. Well played. Definitely nothing wrong with the deck. He didn't have to do much um, to get around me here, but he, he definitely didn't fuck anything up. Uh, so well played on his behalf. I don't know. I'll just toss this down there. It doesn't really matter because he just got a card that kills me. I mean, regardless of what he got. So, Oh, Snapcaster Mage. Where are you at, man? That's a shame this thing just did not show up these two times. Damn, that's disappointing. Well, we'll come back to this deck. You know, you guys have fun with the 60s. Hit up the comments with some of your ideas on how I can tweak this thing. Um, it's kind of a specific pathway that I'm going with it, though, which I could make it better by going a bunch of different directions. Um, I kind of want to try and keep on the same path with the blue-white and kind of the same idea, so... We'll see what happens with that. We might come back and retool that later. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys all next time.